New emerging non-volatile memories are rolling out in many computer applications. These technologies include magnetic random access memory, resistive RAM, phase change memory, and ferroelectric memory. I'm Tom Coughlin. And I'm Jim Handy. And we're the co-authors of a new report that examines emerging memory technologies and forecasts the adoption of these technologies and their impact on computing. In this talk, we will project the growth of these memories with examples of current products, along with some discussion about the applications that will transform computer architectures. I'll let Jim give you some background information to get us started. In this presentation, we'll explain why emerging memories are suddenly poised to replace established technologies like flash and DRAM. We will explain what that means to the computing community and how it will change system and software architecture and we'll detail four leading emerging memory technologies. We will then look at the first movers, and after that, we will look at some early applications being made by their customers. Finally, we will share a forecast for emerging memories and our conclusions. Although there have always been numerous alternatives to today's leading memory technologies, they have never enjoyed success. Until now, these memories have lost out to the market's dominant technologies, DRAM, NAND flash, SRAM, and NOR flash. Let's look at why things are changing and at today's opportunities for new technologies to replace their entrenched competition. The semiconductor industry is being forced to change which memory technologies are used in SOCs. This is because flash memory can't scale to keep pace with CMOS logic process advances. SOCs use NOR flash, and NOR stops scaling at 28 nanometers. This is providing an opportunity for some other technologies to replace NOR flash. SRAM has similar issues. There will be side benefits to this change. Alternative memories not only scale past the limits of established technologies, but they also are persistent and have more balanced read and write speeds. This will impact the way systems and software are configured. We will discuss these changes later on in this presentation. This is a chart that we use to illustrate the issue of scaling. It shows two lines that represent NOR flash and some new emerging memory technology. The process nodes run along the bottom, shrinking as we move to the right. Relative cost on the vertical axis has always declined in proportion to each process shrink. But flash memory has a problem. After the 28 nanometer node, NOR flash stops scaling. That causes its cost declines to cease. Manufacturers are addressing this issue by migrating to new memory technologies. Although today they are more costly than NOR flash, their costs will eventually fall below that of flash since they can scale past 28 nanometers. This is a similar chart that plots the cell area for SRAM designs presented at an IEEE conference over the past few years. The cell area, which is proportional to cost, is measured on the vertical axis, and the process geometry runs along the bottom. Cell area abruptly stopped shrinking at 14 nanometers to make SRAM a reasonable candidate for replacement. The emerging memory that replaces it will reduce costs and add persistence. Tom will now discuss how changes in memory technologies will impact the way we do computing. Thank you, Jim. These new memories will drive modifications in system architecture since all emerging technologies are non-volatile. This will not only bring persistence closer to the processor, but it will eventually bring persistence into the processor itself. But that's not right around the corner. Let's instead talk about today and the nearer future. To capture a mainstream market, a memory must be cost competitive against established technologies. This cost structure can only be achieved through high volume shipments. This chart represents computing's, computing's memory storage hierarchy. A technology will succeed in this hierarchy if it is cheaper than the next fastest technology and faster than the next cheapest technology. To get 3D crosspoint adopted into this memory hierarchy, Intel must overcome a chicken and egg problem. It must be cheap to sell in volume, but 
it must sell on volume to get cheap. The same problem stands in the way of other emerging persistent memories acceptance. NOR's hard stop at 28 nanometer and SRAM scaling issues open the door for other technologies to displace them in SOCs. A von Neumann computer wastes lots of energy and time moving data around. These energy and time issues can be addressed by moving from a von Neumann architecture to a memory-centric approach. This opportunity has led to new protocols like OpenCAPI, CXL, uh, C6, and Gen Z. Such approaches support memory disaggregation by removing some memory from behind the processor, memory pooling and sharing to more efficiently use storage and memory to address new problem classes, and heterogeneous computing, which allows data to be processed by a variety of types of accelerators. Note that the memory-centric system includes a DRAM connected directly to the CPU as near memory and the far memory that is shared. This means that its data path to the CPU must be arbitrated, and this adds latency. Industry is slowly converging on a preferred mix of these solutions to solve today's and tomorrow's problems. For memory, the industry appears to be moving towards a specific mix divided by whether the memory is near memory or far memory. CXL is gaining popularity for pooling heterogeneous memory or memory with mixed latencies and data rates and the memory or, and the memory or on accelerator cards within the box. Gen Z is likely to be used to connect storage boxes and racks together. Near memory has three candidates in the running, DDR channels, high bandwidth memory, memory which provides more bandwidth than DDR, but is less flexible and more costly. OMI, the Open CAPI memory interface, currently used by IBM's power processors and certain FPGAs. Let's have a closer look at how these near memory interfaces compare against each other. This chart illustrates the operating spaces of the near, near memory interfaces just mentioned, DDR4, DDR5, HBM and OMI. It's from a white paper that Jim and I just released called The Future of Low Latency Memory. It's available free on the web. We'll give you a link at the end of the presentation. DDR is great for near memory in PCs and smartphones, but it falls short for high-end servers and accelerator cards. Many accelerator cards today use HBM high bandwidth memory for its high bandwidth. HBMs are stacks of DRAM chips that present 1,000 to 2,000 parallel signal paths to the processor. HBM is used in applications that can accept its significantly higher price in return for its blazing speed. The Open Memory Interface, or OMI, uses existing high-speed serial signaling FIs with a custom pro protocol to connect the processor to DDIMs made of standard low-cost DDR DRAMs and an OMI transceiver chip. OMI can provide near HBM bandwidth at a DDR-like capacity and price. Now let's change gears. Jim will explain the new memory types that will tap into these configurations. Thanks, Tom. I'm going to talk about the emerging memory technologies that will be moving into computing applications over the next few years. We should mention that these technologies are covered in much greater depth in our emerging memory report. Most of the rest of this presentation is based on the contents of that report. There are many emerging memory types vying to win. They all have a small single element bit cell that promises to scale smaller to become cheaper than current technologies. There are all, they are all non-volatile, so they can all be used as persistent memory. New memories are necessary for Moore's Law scaling to continue. These technologies include ferroelectric RAM, magnetic RAM, resistive RAM, and phase change memory, including Intel's Optane memory. Let's have a brief look at each of them. Everspin has shipped a total of over 120 million standalone MRAM chips over the course of time. The company is in a partnership with Global Foundries, who produces this MRAM for other customers to use as embedded memory in SOCs. 
Another company, Renaissance, is also shipping an MRAM chip. Other foundries now offer MRAM, including global foundries, TSMC, Samsung, and UMC. Phase change memory, or PCM, is used in Intel's 3D crosspoint memory, or Optane SSDs and DIMMs. Intel has been researching PCM for over 50 years. Intel shipped its first Optane SSDs in 2017, and the first DIMMs shipped at the end of the following year. Micron is Intel's 3D crosspoint manufacturing partner, but Micron recently decided to exit this business and will sell the plant that it was using to make this technology. Intel, Micron, and Samsung all tried to sell PCM chips into the NOR flash market over a decade ago, but the market never developed. ST Microelectronics currently produces PCM-based microcontrollers. Resistive RAM, our third technology, has been shipped by Adesto since 2013. Global Foundries will offer Adesto's CB RAM as a non-volatile memory option. ARM spinout, Surfy Labs, plans to develop and license new types of re-RAM based on a joint development project with Symmetrix. Other companies currently ship resistive RAM and leading foundries are supporting this technology. Finally, we come to the oldest emerging memory technology, ferroelectric memory or FRAM. Surprisingly enough, this technology predates the development of the integrated circuit. The photo on this slide, published by Bell Labs in 1959, 55, sorry, is, is not an IC, but it's a single SBT crystal with vertical and horizontal metal traces that could be used as a non-volatile memory. At 4 billion chips, more FRAM units have shipped than all other emerging memory technologies combined. Until recently, FRAMs were based on unfriendly materials. Recent research has found that hafnium oxide has ferroelectric properties. Hafnium oxide is commonly used as a high-K dielectric in leading edge CMOS processes. Tom will now discuss the current status of these technologies. Thank you, Jim. Each of these emerging technologies is in volume. MRAM, phase change memory, resistive RAM, and ferroelectric RAM. Where are they being manufactured? Leading foundries, those with processes finer than 28 nanometers, now offer emerging memory technologies to their customers. These foundries include TSMC, Samsung, Global Foundries, and UMC. They offer STT MRAM today and plan to offer SOT MRAM and other MRAM technologies in the future. Although today's emerging memories aim to replace embedded NOR flash, newer technologies could compete against SRAM and possibly even DRAM. Other companies offer resistive RAM and ferroelectric RAM today. This is a slide from TSMC. They've shared their roadmap for EMRAM and E resistive RAM in their SOCs. With its 22 nanometer node, the company offers EMRAM F as a replacement for embedded flash. EMRAM and ERRAM are offered as low density configuration memories shared at the 22, starting at the 22 nanometer mode node. They're available towards the end of 2021. Even faster MRAM is scheduled for 2022. Our report covers not only TSMC, but also other leading foundries, providing details on their plans for emerging memories at sub 28 nanometer process nodes. Let's explore some applications that are already using these emerging memory technologies. This is a block diagram of Ambique's fourth generation Apollo SOC, which serves as both an application processor and a coprocessor of ultra low power battery operated IoT endpoint devices. If you look at the lower left corner, you will see that the system memory subsection subsystem, which is made of MRAM and SRAM, and the chip pairs, as you can see here, a two megabyte MRAM with a one megabyte SRAM. Another device that ships with embedded MRAM, also from TSMC, is made using technology from Newman, an MRAM IP house. 
This chip is used by NASA for distributed computing in space. MRAM is naturally less sensitive to radiation than flash or, or DRAM. It's high endurance and non-volatility both help to reduce energy requirements, which is also important. Each deep neural network accelerator chip has from one to 32 processing engines with 32 to 1,024 ALUs to perform efficient processing for matrix multiplication, convolution, and other, and other mathematical algorithms. MRAM is also being used in Sony's GPS receiver, which can be found in Huawei's GT2 smartwatch. Built on Samsung's 28 nanometer FD-SOI process, this IoT endpoint includes eight megabits of embedded MRAM. There are many other emerging memory devices that ship in production today. This includes an MRAM microcontroller from NXP, a phase change memory-based microprocessor from ST Microelectronics, and ferroelectric random access memory-based microcontrollers from Texas Instrument and Fujitsu. Jim will now give our projections for emerging memory growth, our conclusions, and some information on our latest emerging memory report. Thanks, Tom. With all these devices coming online, what is our outlook for the market? This chart comes from our recent report called Emerging Memories Find Their Direction. The report finds that the total emerging memory market, which is mostly MRAM and 3D Crosspoint, could exceed $36 billion by 2030. This chart shows the petabyte shipment growth that will drive that number. We'll show you how to learn more about this report at the end of the presentation. So let's revisit the points made in this presentation. Lithographic scaling is limiting the use of NOR flash and possibly SRAM for high density embedded devices. Persistent memories are now available that can scale beyond NOR flash and SRAM. These new technologies will change computing architectures and the storage memory hierarchy. Four technologies seem to be in the lead, MRAM, PCM, RERAM, and FRAM. They're supported by foundries today and are already finding their way into commercial and other applications. MRAM and PCM RAM use will generate over $36 billion in annual revenue by 2030. Finally, a word about the report that most of this information came from. This report is available for purchase online. It covers the entire emerging memory ecosystem, the technologies, PCM, RERAM, MRAM, and FRAM, the companies that make the technology, the markets where the technology will be sold, and the support requirements for the tools to build this. Forecasts predict emerging memory consumption growth and the tool purchases to support the growth for both embedded and standalone emerging memories. The report boasts 201 pages with 31 tables and 142 figures. Visit the URLs at the bottom of the slide to learn more. Finally, we've got some references for materials. If you click on the hot links in this presentation, if you download the PDF, then you'll be able to tell uh, where some of this information came from. Thank you. And I think now Tom and I are ready for questions.